Hello, uh, this is Subarna Kaur from Micro Azure Host Networking Team, Microsoft, and I'm going to talk about validating DPDK application portability in multi-cloud hybrid cloud environment. So this is the agenda. First, we'll talk about problem statement, then about our current APIs available, a few interesting usage patterns in SDN environment, results, uh, a few inconsistencies in TISPMD uses that we saw, future work, and uh, acknowledgments. So problem statement. Uh, currently, as we all know, customers are leaning more and more towards multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment. Customers prefer multi-cloud because uh, they don't want vendor lock-in, and sometimes customers want to keep some of their applications on-prem and some applications in a cloud environment. So that leads to a hybrid cloud situation. As long as the application is on-prem, customers have full control over what kind of platform they have, like what hardware and what NIC. But once the application moves on to cloud, they can't dictate anymore what NIC or what platform they're going to get. But this is a general expectation that a DPDK application should work across different platforms. And uh, there might be performance difference as you change uh, hardware, but the basic functionality should still work. In this talk, I'm going to focus on DPDK's uh, flow offload API called RT Flow. RT Flow uh, actually provides us a way to configure the hardware to match on certain ingress or egress patterns and then um, perform certain actions on the packet. Like we can encapsulate or decapsulate the packet or we can send it to a particular QID, we can drop the packet or we can query some rule counters for it. RT Flow supports a very rich set of patterns and actions uh, capability, but it's not necessary that all the underlying drivers also support those set of features. With each DPDK release, there is an increased divergence in the kind of features that RT Flow supports and the features that actually the underlying drivers support. Currently, the best known way to uh, know if a flow works or not is to create the flow and then to manually verify it by debugging through the driver code. This expects the user to create the flow accurately and plus to have uh, expert knowledge of the underlying driver code. So what we are proposing is a test suite that creates flows for common use cases and runs it across all the drivers. This will give the developers a basic idea of what features are supported across different drivers. And if a developer wants to add some new RT flow use case, it will be a good starting point for them also. So current APIs available, like currently, um, if you want to create a RT flow, either you can code it from scratch and include it in a DPDK standalone application, or you can use the test PMD CLI. This, I have included the link for test PMD CLI, and test PMD offers a pretty good CLI. Uh, we have used both the methods, like we tried to use test PMD, we tried to patch test PMD for a few use cases of ours, and we tried to code up uh, a few uh, RT flow use cases and uh, include it in our DPDK application also. In the subsequent slides, I have put up a few examples of test PMD commands that we used. So, um, Let's talk about a few interesting usage patterns in SDN environment. The basic purpose of a RT flow is to be able to match on certain values in the header of the packet or in the payload of the packet and then perform actions on it. So the richer the kind of uh, pattern that we can match on or the more flexible pattern that we can match on, it's always better for us. So if we uh, look at VLAN, like VLANs are used to differentiate between packets, they are used for network separation, sometimes they can also be used for like, um, uh, like uh, mentioning the priority of the packet. So if the NIC is able to distinguish between a tagged or untagged packet, or if the NIC is able to distinguish between different ranges of VLAN ID, or push or pop VLAN as an action of the RT flow, then that's a pretty important feature. And as you can see over here, I have included an example for what we used to validate uh, RT flow for distinguishing between, uh, distinguishing between tagged and untagged packets. So I'll just uh, explain a simple flow in case uh, people are not familiar with it. So what validate does, it, is it does not try to create a flow, it just tries to confirm whether such a flow can be offloaded or not. You can use create also, Create will first validate the flow and then try to create it. So zero is the port ID over here, 
and uh, ingress is the direction, like either it's an ingress packet or egress packet. And uh, in the pattern, I have mentioned that the type is hex 8100, that is the value for uh, VLAN tag. And the actions I've mentioned that you can uh, that, uh, send it to Q1. Similarly for ranges, like generally when we uh, create a RT flow, we always mention the spec and the mask. But in this case, like if you want to mention range, then you have to mention last also. So here what I'm trying to say is that uh, match on all packets which have a VLAN ID between uh, 10 to 15. Similarly, uh, for push or pop VLAN, I have used the action of off pop VLAN. Now, if we uh, look at the next point, like uh, in a SDN environment, when we have a load balancer, it always uh, adds another level of encapsulation to the packet. We already have one level of encapsulation and the load balancer adds another level. So at that stage, we have three levels of headers for the packet. And if we can actually match on header values for all the three levels, then that's a pretty uh, important feature for the NIC. So we tried to check that if we can actually match on headers on all the three levels of like on the outermost header, on the middle header, and on the inner header also. And uh, we used action RSS for that. While we were looking into this multiple levels of encapsulation, we came across this feature called RT flow item type any. So that's a pretty uh, powerful feature in the sense that it helps you to match across, uh, match for a specific uh, header value across different levels of encapsulation. Like you can mention that I want to match that my uh, Ethernet destination MAC is like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can mention that I want it across like four levels of encapsulation. So it will go and match across each header and check if your Ethernet value is uh, as mentioned or not. So if, uh, so RT flow item type any looks like a pretty um, powerful feature for any NIC. And uh, TCP SYN flags, we generally use TCP SYN flags for connection tracking. For instance, like uh, we might want to track a flow state until we see the reset of the packet or we can match SYN and SYNAX to um, track NAT flows. Similarly, like we, uh, so in, uh, in a SDN environment, we can also have like a different packet processing pipeline for a connection startup or a tear down. So we also wanted to check if current vendors allow us to match on packets uh, based on the TCP SYN flags or not. So once we had identified uh, these few uh, interesting use cases in a SDN environment, we thought of trying these out across a few different vendors. We used test PMD for it and sometimes we changed test PMD or we wrote our own code. So um, this exercise was only to check uniformity of RT flow user experience across vendors and to uh, showcase that because uh, different vendors support different features, this might actually lead uh, uh, to a DPDK application to break when we are in a cloud environment. We also wanted to verify if a test suite can help developers uh, create a DPDK applications that is vendor agnostic. So uh, this is a matrix that I created and uh, I have uh, made a list of different flows that we tried out and we tried out uh, it across a few different vendors. And I've also mentioned whether we tried it out across test PMD or uh, by code or we changed our test PMD a little bit for it. And uh, I would like to emphasize again that uh, we did this only to uh, showcase the RT flow user experience uh, across different vendors. And so as you can see, like being able to match on ranges, that is something that is not widely supported across different vendors. Even being able to match on TCP SYN flags, that's also not widely supported. Vendors do support uh, matching on more than one level of headers, but sometimes they have restrictions that you can only match on like one level of end cap header. Similarly, RT flow item type any, that's also not supported across all the vendors. While we were using test PMD, we saw a few inconsistencies, which I would like to talk about. Like uh, there, there were a few cases where like the flow gets created, but it doesn't mean that it actually works as expected. Like for the instance of TCP SYN flags, like the flow got created, but like uh, we expected the packets with SYNAC uh, flag to go into a different QID, which didn't happen. 
And similarly, like when we were trying out flow validate across different vendors, we noticed that some vendors actually don't expect you to mention spec for each of the pattern. Like the first case, like I haven't mentioned a spec for IPv4 or UDP or uh, yeah, for IPv4 and UDP. And that's fine for few vendors, but few vendors expect that you have to mention the spec for each pattern. Like the second case, uh, which is uh, shown over there, that you have to mention the Ethernet, uh, like what do you exactly want to match in Ethernet or in IPv4, the exact source IP or the UDP port, etc. So such cases cause confusion among users about what exactly is the proper test PMD command to use. And there were a few cases which uh, we couldn't validate through test PMD, but it does not mean that the driver does not support it. Like when we were trying to match on VXLAN uh, VNI, we uh, f found out that one of the drivers complained that the VXLAN flag is not set correctly. So basically it expects that the VXLAN flag should be set to eight, which is the default value. But test PMD does not do that currently. Test PMD just zeroes out the entire structure and just sets the VNI which is given as user input. So if you can write your own code, and uh, in a standalone DPDK application and run it for that driver, that flow does get offloaded in the driver. So this is like a mismatch between what test PMD provides and what the driver actually expects. And similarly, like when we were trying to run action RSS, like uh, one of the vendors complained that uh, the VNIC to queue mapping is not done. Um, I still haven't figured out how to do that through code, but it can't be done through test PMD. So these are a few cases like in which uh, uh, test a few RT flows can't be validated through test PMD, but that does not mean that the uh, driver does not support those cases. So at this stage, like uh, I feel that we should try to find out a way to maintain uniformity in test PMD command usage across different vendors. And like uh, as we, I showed the matrix before, like uh, the feature set supported by different vendors is very varied. So I'm sure like uh, for each vendor, we can find out a specific, a uh, uh, different combination of features which would lead to the same result. But that does not make your code uh, vendor agnostic. Like uh, the test suite that we were proposing, yes, that would give you an idea of the features supported by different vendors. But does th then that means that you have to code the lowest common feature set across all the vendors. And that's not a good thing in the sense because then you're not using, then you're losing out in performance for a few vendors and you're not using their hardware to the maximum potential. So this leads to the next question of like, can we have some kind of offload capability advertisement by the hardware? So in that case, like the code can actually just check if this uh, offload thing is advertised by the hardware or not. And if yes, they can offload it, otherwise we can do it in software. So that would make the code portable. And if this is a doable thing, I think uh, maybe we should consider including it in the next versions of DPDK where the hardwares can advertise about what of a capability they have in terms of offload. So this is our future work. Like uh, we're planning to have like a proper test suite covering a wide range of features of RT flow. We're planning to look more into filters like raw packets, which would help us match on payload. Uh, we are putting our code in GitHub and we are open for collaboration. This is the GitHub link. And this is the acknowledge. yeah. I wanted to thank Venki and uh, Swamini Vardhan and Madan Shivakumar and Stephen Eminger for all their help. Yeah, any questions? Yeah. So uh, have you looked at the DTS uh, flow uh, test suite in order to see if it's a complementary or it's uh, just uh, something that you're running instead? Because in uh, DTS, there are some uh, uh, test cases and a lot of flows are already encoded over there. So what is the difference between this one and that one? And maybe uh, uh, it's, a merger uh, should be a, a good uh, choice. I haven't looked at that, but um, yeah. I can uh, I can look into that and I can get back to you. First, a nice presentation. Second, I want to understand. So, your basic concept is to create a dedicated test application and not use the test PMD. 
because with test PM, you have to actually manually create the flow each time. And I, I totally agree. That's a discussion that we are having also in Mellanox regarding this in order to also test the number of flows inserted and everything. So I wanted to understand what your take on yeah, it. Yeah, basically, if there's a test suite which has all the flows already created and you run the test suite, it runs it across all the major vendors and gives you like a matrix kind of thing saying, okay, these are the features which work for this vendor. This is a feature which does not work for this vendor. So that would like, then, then the user won't have to again manually create the flow. They can just look at the feature matrix and get a basic idea from where to start up. Thank you. Hi, thank you for the presentation. So you said that uh, the test PMD is not very consistent between other vendors. The, I think the real question is uh, whether RTE flow is consistent because uh, most effort is done for RTE flow, and you know in addition in test PMD in order to test it properly. Uh, have you had a look at the RTE flow consistency between the vendors? Uh, yes, like RTE flow is also not consistent. Like if you say like RTE flow consistency, do you mean like whether the drivers support all features or not, or like? Yes, because test PMD doesn't uh, necessarily um, reflect all the capabilities that we have in RTE flow. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So basically, yeah, that's what I was talking about, that the f f drivers itself don't support uh, RT flow features. And But yeah, when I was meaning about test PMD consistency, I meant that this, uh, like, uh, like, one second. Can I go back? Oh, no. Sorry, this is someone else's slide. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so when I meant test PMD inconsistency, I meant situations like this. Like in some cases, like uh, you cannot mention spec and s s still the flow gets validated and for some vendors it does not get validated. So I think at this point it's like, uh, maybe we shouldn't mention that everyone has to mention spec or like about the VXLAN flags or the VNIC to Q mapping. Like I think this is our test PMD inconsistency rather than a RT flow inconsistency. And another thing, uh, it's not general, it's not specific to this presentation, but test PMD does a lot of validation. And a lot of cases it fails uh, by itself and it doesn't allow the, the driver itself to do the validation and checks. Yeah. Okay? So in general, as a community, maybe we can think about uh, removing these checks from test PMD so our PMDs would be much more robust and, uh, and generic. Yes, 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 I agree to that, yeah. So related to the robustness thing, have you thought about um, maybe we could fuzz test some of these drivers with RTE flow? Like have a test, P, you know, test flow fuzz where we start out with a known good RTE flow rule and we start banging bits randomly in the f and the match and the action. Because Sorry, could you repeat your question? Uh, so, uh, it goes back to the, the Linux kernel community has recently found thousands and thousands of bugs because there's a zero day sys zbot that Google made that basically tests all the system calls um, in a random shot manner and it finds, you know, all these error corner cases that nobody ever tested. Oh. Uh, and I'd love to see something like this. RT flow is a prime example where this would be helpful and I think it would be true across a lot of the DPDK to try to do that. Now we don't have as m many malicious actors actions but programmers are stupid. We always make mistakes <laughs> and we'd prefer to have them told it to us right away rather than <laughs> crashing thousands of machines. Yeah, then offload it to hardware and then right. realize it. <laughs> You're presenting the hardware in a spin loop or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Any other, any other questions? Okay, thanks a lot, Savarna.